And in this lesson, we will pretty much repeat what we did on the last um, um, lesson with the joist. So although we'll do it up on the roof. So let's go up to our roof level and we're going to add in some beam systems. So we go structure and beam system. And we're going to say, OK, we'll go with the 30 inch, the deeper one. Justification is going to be centered. You can go beginning or end as far as, you know, where you truncate the extra space, depending on the rule that you use over here with the spacing, maximum spacing, fixed number, fixed distance, clear spacing, which is clear between all the flanges. Maximum spacing is center to center. So let's go. I'm going to stick with the 1200. That's fine. And I'm just going to click on here and place that beam system in there. And then I can go down and click on here and do that one as well. And then I'll change to my smaller joist depth and then hover here. And go around to these four cells here. Another one there. One more there. Now, normally what you could do to exercise kind of what we can do with Revit parametrically is to move these grid lines. But I'm noticing now that when I click on the grid, this is this should turn blue. But I think it's because there's too much tied to that grid line. We can still move the grid line, but we can't go in and click this number and change it. And, and I think it's just because there's it's just a little bit too busy as far as what's communicating with that grid line. Um, let's close our hidden extra windows. We can go up to here and say close hidden. Okay. And now we're going to open up our uh, 3D view. And we're going to say tile. And then ZA for zoom all just to exercise um, and see. So there's our new 3D framing. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, well, maybe this span is too much. So for whatever reason, we're going to tape grid line A and we're going to move it by one meter down. So watch how what, what's going to happen here with this update. So I'm going to grab this grid line and I'm going to say move approximately three feet, but I'll go one meter, one M, enter. And what it's going to do is it's going to move the grid line and it's also going to move the girders and the beam systems and adjust that entire thing. The only thing is I don't know if that foundation wall moved. Click out, click in here, shift middle mouse. No, my foundation wall didn't get adjusted. Let's go back to my top of footing. And let's use my good old align tool, modify, align to the grid line, tab to grab the center of the wall, click, and maybe lock that while I'm at it. The next time I move my grid line, it'll adjust accordingly. Exit on that. There's my foundation wall updated. Okay, so um, you can move the grid lines. And when you do, your beam systems, your beam, and your column, and now my foundation wall will all update ZA on the keyboard to zoom all the views. So nice exercise on um, adjusting the grid lines and having our structural model update accordingly.